international corporations are modifying our weather all the time. And they're modifying it in ways that cover thousands and thousands of square miles. Programs are impacting microclimates needed for our crops to survive and needed for pollination. The other issue is that a lot of times we're talking about mitigation for climate change. It's rather an undefined term at this period of time. And so what happens is that many times we're talking about artificially putting chemicals like sulfur or particulates into the atmosphere in what they call geoengineering schemes to reduce, supposedly, global warming. And if you take and you put up into our skies chemicals to reduce the amount of sunlight reaching the Earth, you are going to begin to reduce crop production. Without the process of photosynthesis, whereby plants from direct sunlight gain the energy to grow, to produce crops, we are going to find ourselves, if we mitigate in that direction, impacting the crop production not only here in the United States, but worldwide. What you're seeing now, a lot of times, many scientists know, especially at NASA and in other areas, that the skies that we're seeing are not normal cloud formations. These are man-made. In California, the State Department of Health drinking water tests were examined between 1970 and this year, and we found unusual spiking in barium, aluminum, strontium, manganese, and all of these spiked at the same time in various drinking water supplies across the state of California and also in Arizona. So what's happening with these atmospheric tests is that aluminum, as one example, gets into the root systems of our trees, and it looks like the trees are dying of drought, but they're not. Many of our forests in Redding, California, and other areas are dying from warmer temperatures produced by persistent jet contrails, also impacting tree health and crop health. They know from scientific studies back in the 1970s that they deplete beneficial ozone in the atmosphere by releasing nitric acid. Aircraft making a condensation trail is very similar in many ways to when you go outside on a cold day and exhale you create a condensation trail. That little cloud is a condensation trail. Now, if you take a two-mile walk on a cold day, and you can turn around, and you can see your condensation trail tracking all the way back for two miles, that's how crazy it is to think that what we're looking in the sky is actually condensation trails. The contrails, not the chemical, the contrails occur because of cold air, minus 30. It takes a high altitude, around 30,000 feet plus, there's a carbon dioxide and water vapor in that exhaust. That turns to ice crystals, and that's what you see, the white stream behind it. Those white crystals of ice warm up, dissolve, and the smoke goes away. And it never lasts more than a minute. What we're seeing now, and I first could not believe it, and I started looking at the skies, and these are not normal. They're not natural. There's something going on. I don't know who it is or why they're doing it. All I can testify is it's not natural and it's not normal. Will our corporate controlled media be allowed to black out issues of critical importance? It will come down to this. It's up to us, the citizens of Northern California and elsewhere, to picket in the parking lots until the people at institutions like KRCR and the Record Searchlight, our local newspaper, decide to stop blacking out critical stories and start telling the truth. Again, the weathermen at KRCR, to the weathermen, if you can't talk about the climate engineering issue, tell us. If that's not the case, why would you continue to avoid addressing this issue in any way, shape, or form, no matter how high the community concern grows? We would simply like to know, for example, how you know that the skies will be mostly sunny days in advance and on such days, the only thing in the sky blocking the sun is what's coming out of the back of a jet aircraft passing overhead. How can a meteorologist predict jet sprayed haze blocking the sun days in advance, unless they're in fact reading from a script, perhaps by the National Weather Service or the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration? Both of these government organizations have all their weather predictions modeling done by Raytheon, a massive private defense contractor for our government that's neck deep in climate engineering patents. Are our meteorologists simply reading scripts? Why won't they address public concerns? By, you know, talking about the correlation between violence and video games, and there's a lot of studies that are out there that say that only certain video games cause certain aspects of this violence. 
And, um, and I'm an avid gamer, or I was at least, and I'm trying to get back into it. And uh, I love this medium. It's just, the drone program destroyed my love of this medium as well. <laughs> and I think gamers should be offended that the military and the government are using this type of thing to <coughs> manipulate and, and recruit these guys. Um, it, it's a blatant misuse of power, abuse of power. Um, it, it shouldn't be something along the lines of like, yeah, I want to play this game with my friends or even people that you don't, you, you don't see them face to face. You meet a lot of people instantaneously all over the world. We're so interconnected. We're more interconnected now than we've ever been in the entirety of human history. And that's being exploited to help okay, people so kill just, one I just another. moved all this, it had all this dead wood. Uh, it was like a wood pile, just debris stuff here. It was, you can see where the briars are cut back here and pretty much all out to the edge there. All those briars where it's indentated and all this stuff here. And there was actually no bugs. There was no, no bees or bumblebees nests anywhere. And we had all this wood, rotted wood here, right, right under here, like that, all through here. All this rotted wood was basically stacked right over here. I virtually saw no flying uh, insects, hardly any insects at all. It was really surprising. I did see some earthworms over here. This is likely where some uh, compost bag has fallen apart. But basically, had a couple of bees up here at the uh, the berries, Himalayan back blackberries, Himalayan blackberries. But no bug nests hardly at all. And so this is a lot of stuff to move. I was hoping they'd give me a break, but hardly any bugs. And we've got clear skies today. And I've noticed that we when we have the clear skies. We have, and there is a jet. Now that jet right there, as you can see, there's no contrail at all on that jet. And that jet is actually, that jet is actually moving fairly slow. That is a passenger jet. So that is, that is a passenger jet right there. And you can tell because there's no contrail. And it's moving fairly slow. Um, it's on the flight pattern for the airport up north of here. But what I what I've been saying is that uh, uh, I've noticed we've had fairly clear skies, and these clear skies are usually accompanied by wind. So it's very likely that that we have some ionospheric heaters pushing pulling wind uh, are pushing the wind from the coast and so anyway the reason why I got on the subject about the bugs is because of the geoengineering fallout spray. And like I said, we had hardly any bugs in here at all. Um, I probably pulled up at least an inch of this topsoil and all this old dead wood. No bug nests or anything. So, how many bugs are we losing? How many species per day?